Hi, I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Ag Communication. This is part two of a two-part series on an introduction to Ag Content Management System. Thanks so much for uh, joining us for this webinar. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you just joined uh, the webinar, that uh, you can access the chat pod by clicking the uh, purple tab in the lower right-hand corner of your Blackboard Collaborate screen. Uh, please feel free to use that chat pod to ask any questions that you might have as we go along. So the things we're going to cover today are a couple of different item types that we didn't cover in part one. In part one, we talked about folders and pages and images um, and also files. Um, Today we're going to talk about events and news item types. We'll also try and get to um, the uh, home page issue, how you set up a display for a folder, and then also talk a little bit about portlets and how they work. Again, throughout the, the session today, feel free to, to share your comments in the chat pod, be happy to hear from you. So here is our, our model county extension site that we are working on in uh, part one. Um, and uh, as you might remember, if you if you watched part one, in order to create anything new here, um, we can just use this add new button that's right up here in the uh, in the green bar to the right. And you can see there's several uh, different item types there. Some of those that we talked about in part one. Um, and we're going to talk about the event item type now. Uh, the event item type is a special item type uh, that is designed. Uh, to display events, things that have dates that happen at a certain time uh, and on a certain date. And uh, in your uh, home folder, um, you might have, or you had when we created your home folder for your site, an events folder. Uh, the, an events folder is an easy way to keep all of those events together um, so that you can keep track of them. And in some cases, that folder can be excluded from navigation. Um, if you don't have an events folder, um, you can create one. You don't have to name it events. You can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and you can either include it in the navigation or exclude it from the navigation. And again, to do that, we're here in this events folder. All we have to do is go to the edit button, go to settings over here. And then here's that checkbox for exclude from navigation. So if we didn't want that showing up in our left-hand navigation, we could just exclude that um, and then save. And now it's not going to show up there when we come back to our home site. Now, there's some confusion. I get the question every once in a while. Um, someone will uh, say, hey, I've got a folder or an item uh, excluded from a navigation, but it's showing up on, in the navigation. And if, if they send me a screenshot, a lot of times I'll see a screen like you're seeing now, um, where you can see we're in the events folder and we have excluded it from navigation. You saw me do that, but it's showing up here down here at the bottom. And the egg, egg CMS will um, always display something in the left-hand navigation if you are on that particular item or in that particular folder. Uh, it will definitely display that just so as a user, you know where you're at. But if you see, if we go outside of that events folder, if we go somewhere else in the site, now it doesn't display in the left-hand navigation. So the only way that you would get there is through another link, or if you went uh, the way that we would go to it as an, as an administrator through the contents tab in order to find all of our folders here in the contents tab, even those that are excluded from the navigation and don't show up over here on the left, okay? So if we have an events folder, and in this case, it's excluded from the navigation, so we're gonna go to the contents tab to find that and open up that folder. And to create an event, we just use the add new button and choose event. Uh, remember from, from part one of this session, uh, when you're creating something new, um, you go to the folder where you want it to reside first and then click the add new button. If you click the add new button and create something new uh, in another folder, that's okay. You can move that. It's pretty easy to do underneath the, uh, the contents tab, um, but it's obviously uh, more efficient if you go into the folder where you want um, that item to reside first and then click the add new button. So here's our screen for add event. 
very similar to the screens we saw last time in terms of folders and pages and and images there is a, a title and then in this case the title is required unlike an image or a file um, everything has to have a name and without you typing something into this uh, into this area uh, you won't have a name uh, an image in a file you don't have to put a title in we recommend that you do uh, but if you don't put a title in on an image or a file, uh, the title will just become the file name of that image or file uh, that you've uploaded. In this case, there's no file to file name to rely on, so we have to put in a title of our own. Okay. Again, we have a description area here. Um, I'm going to put some some content in that, just so you can see how that displays in an event. Um, and then our next field is event location. Uh, this is the, the physical location of the event, or if it's a virtual event, uh, maybe the virtual location, a link to a webinar, like the link that I sent you uh, to join this webinar. Um, for now, just for uh, the sake of uh, creating a test event, I'm just going to put a city and state. If you uh, wanted to put a, a, a physical address uh, in there as well, uh, so people could find your event, that would be great. And now we have our start and end date um, for the event. Um, start date makes sense, right? If we're going to promote an event, um, we need to put the date that it occurs on there. So I'm going to go ahead and make up a, a time for tomorrow. And now it's asking me for when does the event end? This might not seem important, right? I mean, who cares? Maybe it's an hour long. You know, maybe people are interested if it's an hour long or two hours long. Um, but it is important from an Ag CMS standpoint, and that's because one of the things we'll look at as we create this event is the event portlet. And the event portlet uh, displays upcoming events. Um, so how does the system know the difference between an event that's upcoming, an event that's in progress, and an event that has passed? Well, because you put in an event end date and time. So if this is, I'm going to go ahead and say this is an hour long. Okay. As anytime you're adding an event um, in terms of uh, the um, uh, AM and PM, be careful of that, right? Um, you can sometimes lose some of your progress here if you make the mistake of uh, putting in a, an event end time that is uh, earlier uh, in the calendar than your event start time. Um, so pay attention to that kind of stuff. Make sure that your event end time is actually after your start time and those kinds of things. Um, and now we've got the the core there. Um, and now here's our opportunity to, to enter uh, body text. This is any information that you want to share about your event, right? So it can be a description of your event. Um, it could be the details. It could be the agenda. You can do anything in this space that you could do in a page, right? So you could do lists, bulleted, and, and numbered. Uh, you can uh, insert uh, images. You can insert media. Anything that you could do in a page item type, you can do here uh, in our event. And again, I'm just going to put some gibberish in here so that we can kind of see how that displays when we save that event, OK? Attendees is really a space that uh, you would use if we were using uh, our content management system as an intranet, right? So if we were all in it, maybe we could actually use it as a calendaring system the way that we use Outlook now. Um, so you could add uh, people's Ag CMS usernames to that attendees area uh, and to include them. But in this case, wouldn't worry about it, right? Not something that we don't deal with very, very often. Uh, below that, you see the event URL. Um, so why do you need an event URL if um, you've got the content right there? Well, you don't necessarily, but in cases like the North Dakota State Fair, where counties like to add the State Fair to their list of events on their website, um, they could add the direct link to that event, right? Or maybe if um, uh, you're putting on a workshop like Design Your Succession Plan or something like that, um, you might want to include a link to the Design Your Succession Plan homepage, the state homepage, um, so they can get even more information, um, even though that's a local event. So that's a space to do that by putting in the event URL. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Uh, as it 
it says there, if this is an external link, so it's outside of your Ag CMS site, then you need the web address with the HTTP colon slash slash. Okay, and then type that whole URL in there or copy and paste it uh, from the web address bar on your browser. Uh, contact name, self-explanatory, right? This is who do I contact if I, if I need something or have a problem? Contact email address, same idea. And contact phone number, again, self-explanatory why you would need that. We're just gonna fill this stuff in so that you can see how it displays once we save that. So that's, uh, that's really it. There's your event. Just like when we dealt with pages and other items uh, in the earlier session, uh, you still have all these tabs up here. So you have categorization so that you could add keywords or tags to this particular uh, event. Uh, you have dates. So you could set an expiration date for this item. Um, that maybe isn't necessary since we have an end date in the event anyway. Um, and then you have our settings tab over here. So we could exclude this from the navigation uh, if we wanted to. Um, but in this case, since our folder is already excluded from the navigation, it really becomes a non-issue because everything in the folder uh, is going to be excluded from the navigation as well. So we'll go ahead and click Save on this event. And here's how a typical event displays. Um, this is probably going to look a little bit different on a live site, um, especially one that has a right-hand portlet column active. In this case, uh, this, this site doesn't, um, at least in the space that we're, um, that we're creating this event. Um, but this is the basic look and feel. So here's our title up here. Our byline, that's only a visible when we're logged into Ag CMS, so that would not appear. This lighter gray, I don't know if you can tell that's lighter gray, um, but this lighter gray text is that description that we added in. And below that is our body text area, okay? And this link, more information about this event, is our live link that we put in for, uh, uh, for more, more information about the event. Uh, the event URL, okay? Over here, we have this box, and this is unique to events uh, that is going to display um, the date and time, right? So September 8th from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., uh, the location, right, that we put in, the contact name. Remember, I just put in my first name, and you can see that becomes a link so that when we click that, let me drag this over there, it's going to open up a... Uh, uh, email message uh, to that email address uh, that you that you put in when you created the event, our contact phone number, and then these two items here. What are these two items? The system creates um, two items that people can download so they can easily add this event to their calendar. Uh, the iCal uh, file is what you would use if you wanted to uh, add this to an Apple calendar, like uh, your calendar on iPhone, those kinds of things. Uh, the VCAL is really for everything else. So you could download this event in VCAL format and it would add it to uh, your Outlook. When you tried to open that up, Outlook would try and open it up and you could easily add it to your calendar. So that is um, an event item type. Any questions? Thanks, Sonia, for posting that live link. Um, so you can see one uh, and how it looks on an actual site. Wait for a second, see if there's any questions. If you have questions, put them in the chat pod. If you can't find the chat pod, it's the purple tab down in the lower right and uh, be happy to answer any questions. Okay. We're gonna do something with this event a little bit later when we talk about portlets. But if there's no questions, we'll move on. We'll talk about uh, adding news items. So news items, very similar idea, right? These are specific item types that um, kind of fit that scenario, uh, a particular scenario. In the case of the event, it's something that is, has a start date and an end date um, that you might want to collect in some way as that particular item type. Um, in the case of news, um, there's a couple of features that you'll see that are unique to news items that that sort of go along with what you would think about a news article on the web. 
So again, uh, before we create our news item, we need to decide where we're going to keep that. Um, again, you may have a new folder uh, as part of your site already. And you can see if we go into our contents tab on our Model County Extension site, um, there is a news folder already there. We see it's not over here on the left-hand navigation, so we know that it's been already been excluded from the navigation. Your news folder doesn't have to be excluded from the navigation. Maybe you want to name it latest news um, or something like that and put it in the left-hand navigation or even feature it as a display some other way on your website so people can up, keep up to date with what the, what the latest goings on are. Um, so if we want to create a news item, we want to go into the folder where we want to create it. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that news folder. And just as we did before, we'll use the add new button and choose news item. Okay, so very similar again, our tabs across the top, categorization for adding keywords and tags, our dates if we want something to expire, um, our creators tab, which we talked about before, not super important, just shows who created this item, and then our settings tab if we want to exclude from navigation. Again, in this case, our folder's already excluded from navigation, so no need to do that. So if I jump back to the default tab, uh, again, it's asking me for a title, uh, uh, just like we did with the event, a title is important. Everything needs to have a name. Okay, we have our summary area if we want to use that. Here's a brief summary. Maybe, hey, this is what this news item is actually about. And then we have our body text area. Again, very exactly the same as we went, dealt with with the other item types. We can put anything in here that we want. Text, images, um, live links if we want to. Right, so we treat this just like we would any other news item. Before you start dumping images into this body text area, uh, even though you have the capability of doing that, um, as you'll see right below this, as we scroll down, there is a featured image that is part of every news item or can be part of every news item. And again, this is what makes it a little bit unique, right? So typically when you think of reading news on the web, you look at an article, you see the text there sort of up in the in the upper right, usually you're going to see some kind of featured photo with a caption. So the ability to sort of attach an image to a news item and add a caption is something that's unique to the news item type. Okay, you could put additional photos in the body text. Uh, you could, again, like we said, we could put live links, whatever we want in the body text, but we have this special image that uh, is unique to the news item type. So we've got some text in our body text area. Let's look for our image. We just click browse. Very easy. Browse our computer, find our image, select it, click open that will attach the image to the news item. And then we can add our image caption. Okay. And go ahead and click save. So here's what you get. Um, here's our title that we talked about. Byline goes away when uh, we're on the public site, that's just for logged in view. Uh, same with this other link about adding portlets. Here's our description that we put in the light gray area. Here's our body text. And then over here on the right, this is our featured news item image with our caption sort of superimposed over the top of it. So that's a news item and sort of what that makes that item unique. Sony has added a link to some news items that you can can view there if you want to look at them live. Um, questions about news items. So like anything at Ag CMS, people have repurposed these things to kind of meet, you know, they want a particular layout or they want a uh, particular uh, view that they want to use. So they might use a news item for content that's not news. Um, that's okay. Just be aware of that when you're when you're doing it. Um, uh, but this is really best suited for stuff that is news. And and one of the reasons is because when we talk about portlets, there are some specialized portlets that are 
uh, structure to deal with news items and events, and they display them as they are news items uh, or events, um, not as if they're just any other kind of content. Okay. Don't see any questions in the chat, so I'm going to move on. Um, and before we get to the portlets, talk a little bit about displays. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back to our test folder that we created last time. So any folder in Ag CMS um, has a default display. And that default display is really a list of the things that are in this folder. So you can see in this test folder that we created uh, in part one, uh, we've got the title of the folder here. We've got the description that we put in. And then here are the items that we created inside the folder. We only have one page. Um, and th that's listed here. If we look over in the left-hand navigation, you see the same thing, right? Here's the folder that we created. And then beneath that is a sub item. Once we click in to that folder, it opens that up in the, in the navigation and shows us that one sub item um, in the folder. But oftentimes that you, you have a folder and that's not what you want to display, right? The biggest example is your home folder. Right. Every Ag CMS site starts with a folder. We create a folder. In this case, the folder was called Model County Extension Site. Um, and then you, you start putting stuff in it into that folder, and that creates your website. Um, but typically, the default view of a folder, instead of being like what you see here with all this great information and, and images and those kinds of things, is going to look like this. Right? When we first create it, it's, it's probably going to look like this. It's got, it's the default view of a folder with all the items that are inside that folder. So how do you deal with that? How do you turn this into something attractive that, that people want to see? And that is by manipulating this display area that you see up here in the, um, in the top right of the, of the green bar, the green edit bar. Um, and in most cases, what people are doing is creating a home page. Right, so they would create a page item um, that looked the way that they want it to look, and then they would set that as the default view uh, for that folder. In this case, if we go back to the contents tab, we start scrolling through stuff. You're going to see we've got a page here, and I know it's a page because of the little icon next to the title. Right, if I mouse over that, it's going to tell me that that it's a page and give me some information about that. Um, these other ones are folders. We know that because of the, the folder icon. This page is designed to be the home page of this site. And if I click into it, you're going to see this is what it looks like, right? So somebody's come in here. They've put some text in here. They've actually formatted the text with some headings um, and put some different styles of text in here, inserted some images, and made it look the way that it's to look, OK? So you can do that. Create a, create a page. Uh, that's intended to be the home page of, a, of your site or a particular folder, right? Maybe you've created a subfolder, uh, even your, your news folder or one of these subfolders, topic folders over here, um, and you've got some stuff organized in there, but you want there to be a home page. Well, you can create a new page, make it look the way that you want, and then set it as the, dis the display item uh, for that folder. So let's look at how to do that. Now we've already got our, our page created. It looks the way that we want it to look. To set it as the default display, we'll come up here to Model County Extension Site. So we're in the folder that we want to manipulate. And then click the display item over here. And you can see there are a number of different views. Before we select our content item as a default view, I want to show you some of these views, right? So this is the standard view, but there's also a summary view available. That looks like this. So instead of getting the icons like we got before, you see each item as a title with a with the description area there and then a link to read more. So in some cases, maybe you have a folder that's full of information. It might not be necessary to create a home page. Maybe if you display the list of content in that folder in a different way, it can look the way that you want it to look without having to create a home page with links to all this other stuff. Okay, So there's one pot potential uh, display. Um, there's a tabular view. I don't see us using that very much, but you might have particular uh, 
instances where you want to display a tabular view. Some of this stuff will not display in the tabular view uh, when we when we see it in a in a public view. Here's the thumbnail view. This one's probably not going to. Well, actually, it is going to uh, give us a little bit of um, uh, images on here in color. But the thumbnail view is really a great view for a folder that's full of images. And why don't I click right into the image folder here and see that as a thumbnail view? And you can kind of see uh, the advantage of that, right? So all of the all of the images that are in this folder uh, display as thumbnails. And then anything that's not an image displays down here kind of in its standard uh, standard view. Okay. All right, so let's go back and look at a few more of these displays. We've looked at summary view, tabular view, thumbnail view, standard view. Um, all content flow player, we're not going to deal with those right now. They're, they really have to do with uh, some other uh, media that uh, you would add into your egg CMS. But there are a couple I do want to look at. One is blog view. So a blog view is actually going to, to display all of the content in the site as if it's a blog, right? So you can see it's the full, the privacy statement here. That's the entire privacy statement. This page model county extension that we looked at before, that displays as the whole page. So think of this as looking at a blog. And as you scroll through, you're seeing the whole post, right? And all the posts that are in this folder. One of the things you'll notice about this view is that um, all of these items that, that we know are inside of Model County Extension Site, like 4-H and Youth and all these, those are folders, so they won't display in this view. So only pages and other similar content items will display in this blog view. Uh, folders will not display, OK? Um, the last one here that before we get to using a content item as the default view is Ag CMS summary view. This is a, a view that uh, we created um, that is a variation on the summary view. So here it's going to look pretty much, you know, like you like it looked before um, until we scroll down, right? Because Ag CMS summary view, in addition to doing the title, the description, and the link for more, also will load over here on the right any photos that are inside that item, right? So all of these are folders, so there's no photos to display um, because those photos aren't embedded in the item. But when we get to the page down here, the Model County Extension page, that has an image in it, um, actually has a couple of images in it, but it, but XCMS Summary View pulls that first image and puts it over uh, on the right. I think you see a pretty good example of XCMS Summary View on that link that um, that uh, Sonia shared to the NDSU Extension Food Nutrition site. Uh, I, I, if I remember right, they are using that Ag CMS summary view to display uh, content um, and pull that image in. So it's a little bit more of an interesting view than just the title, description, and link. OK? So lots of different ways to display uh, items that are in folders or collections. We haven't talked much about collections, but collections are are what we call folderish items in the Ag CMS. They're not technically folders, but they they act like folders. And so, these displays that we're using on these folders could also be used on collections as well. So we started this whole conversation about uh, talking about designating a home page or using a content item as the default display. So let's show that last. Here's the display again. Uh, here are all the different displays that we've dealt with. If I want to set a particular content item as the default view of a folder, I just choose that at the bottom. Select a content item as default view. And the system's going to show me everything that's in this folder. It has to be in this folder, not in a subfolder. Um, but everything that's in this folder that could be used as a default view, right? So that's basically pages, collections, um, news items, events, but not folders, not files, not images, okay? And you can see there's a uh, there's that model county extension page that we looked at. I just select that and save, okay? And now 
that is the default view of the folder. Instead of showing people what's inside the folder, it's going to show them the item that you've designated instead. Let's take a look at that in the test folder real quickly just to see how that would work in a subfolder. And because I want to show you something, when I click on this test folder, we have this page that's in here. Notice that it displays in the left-hand navigation. This is in standard view, so it's showing us the items that are inside this folder with just the icon and the, and the name here. But if I go ahead and change this display of the test folder, and I say select a content item as default view, there's only one content item in this folder that could be used uh, as a default uh, view. So it's already selected for me. I click Save. Right, and a couple things happen. One is when I click test over here, instead of seeing the items inside that folder as I would in standard view, I see this page that I've designated uh, instead. And also if you look in the left-hand navigation, page no longer appears there. That's because it would be redundant. You're already looking at page, so there's no reason to navigate to it. Um, so that item that you've set as the default view um, does not appear in the navigation under that folder any longer. It still appears, like if we went into the contents tab here, it still appears as part of the folder in the contents tab. But as far as the navigation is concerned, test and page have become one in the same. So a note about that real quickly is that it can be disconcerting to a user, uh, especially an attentive user. If they come over here and click something, like test, like they're expecting to see test. And when it loads, you can see the title of this item is not test, it's page. That can be kind of disconcerting, right? So uh, my recommendation is that if you're going to use a default view of default item as the view of the folder, um, that you name them the same, right? So in this case up here, this folder is model county extension and we named that page model county extension so that uh, when the user clicks model county extension, they get model county extension. They don't get something else. They don't get home page. They don't get welcome. They don't get, you know, page 101 or whatever. They click model county extension. What they see at the top is model county extension. Here, it's uh, more disconcerting because I click test, but I get something called page. Thanks, Sonia, for posting an example to uh, the blog view. Uh, any questions about displays and setting content items as default views? All right, if you have questions, please go ahead and put them into the chat. All right, so let's talk about portlets. So if you are on part one, or if you watch the recording, um, we spent some time talking about the main areas of the site. We have the header area up here, right? Um, we have the content area, this main part where we see model county extension and the pictures and the, and the other text. Uh, we have the footer, we talked about that down here. Um, and then we talked about portlet columns, right? A left-hand portlet column and a right-hand uh, portlet column. Um, and, you, and you can see, we can see the left-hand portlet column here because that's where your navigation lives, is in the left-hand portlet column. And that's, that's inherited from above. When we create a new site uh, for you, um, the way portlets work is that if you create something higher up in the hierarchy, in the folder uh, organization, uh, it flows down to subfolders um, unless uh, the administrator blocks it from, from flowing down. So that navigation is coming from higher up in the organization of the folders um, and appears in the left-hand navigation. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to add portlets, let's say to the right-hand side, we'll start there. I would do that by clicking this Manage Portlets link under the left-hand na navigation. I know that seems uh, not logical, <laughs> but it, it's how it works. Uh, when you click Manage Portlets, either in the left or right-hand column, uh, it takes you to the same place. So I'm going to go ahead and click Manage Portlets. 
right? And here you see our portlets assigned in the left-hand column. Navigation shows up here. Um, and we know it's coming from above because it's not appearing under portlets assigned here. It's appearing under uh, block unblock portlet. So that means it's something that's flowing in from above. Over on the right hand side, uh, we've got our right hand portlets. We have nothing over there. That's why it was blank when we looked at it. In the middle is some information about managing portlets and the the key part I want to draw your attention to here is this info box. And what it's letting us know is that we're currently managing the portlets of the default view of the container. What does that mean? That means, remember, if I go back here, we set this model county extension page as the default view of the folder. The folder is the container. The page here is the default view. Any changes that we make to portlets here are only going to appear when we're viewing this page. They're not going to flow down to the subfolders because we are only assigning these portlets to the default view, to the page that is the default view of the container. If we want to manage the portlets of the container itself, of the folder itself, you can see there's a link here to say go here, or we could say go to parent folder, which takes us one level up and gets us into uh, managing portlets for the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click that. Now you see that message goes away. We are managing the portlets for the folder itself rather than just the page that's set as the default view. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and add some portlets. If I want to add to the right hand portlet column, I've got uh, a drop down here with all the portlets in it. And there's a number of different portlets. I'm going to briefly run through each one, um, but we'll we'll create a, just a couple of them to to demonstrate how they work. So a collection portlet. I've mentioned collections a couple of times. A collection is like a saved search, um, and a collection portlet just displays a collection in the portlet column, right? An abbreviated version of the of the collection that you've created in the portlet column. Um, events, we're actually going to create one because we created events today. We'll talk about that. There's a Facebook like box where you can link it to your Facebook page URL, and it will display the posts from your Facebook page. Uh, there's the feed mixer portlet um, where you can take RSS feeds from other sources um, and have those feeds display in your, in your portlet column. Uh, the main way that we've been using this is to take a feed from the NDSU Agriculture News that uh, we produce out of Ag Communication here um, with all the Ag and Extension News and uh, use that feed to display it uh, in websites. Last entries has to do with our blog plugin. I'm not going to talk about that. Same with monthly archive. Um, here you see navigation, right? So that tells you navigation is a portlet. Um, and uh, you can create your own navigation, change your navigation, create duplicate navigation. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but uh, it's possible. We have the news portlet here. Uh, we'll, we'll create one of those to show you how that looks. The quick upload portlet, I want to spend a little bit of time on this. This is a back end portlet only. It does not display in your public view. It's only for your admin view. And what it does is allow you to add multiple images or multiple files to a folder uh, at a time, right? Uh, without the quick upload portlet, you would be clicking, if you wanted to add multiple images to a folder, let's say you would click add new, create, start all over with the next one, add new, create that one. The quick upload portlet allows you to designate a, a list of images, um, give them titles if you want to, and then quickly upload them to a particular folder. Um, but, but in order to do that, you have to activate the portlet add the portlet to the folder that you want to add, you want to use it in. Okay. Recent items uh, is, is part of our blog plugin. I'm not going to deal with that uh, very much. Uh, review list is again a back end portlet um, that we don't see showing up in our workflow very much. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, slideshow, there is a slideshow feature, a slideshow add on that we have. Um, and I, I believe we have an Ag CMS how-to on that. Um, if we don't, we'll create one and get one added for you soon. Um, 
on how to use that, uh, but you can use that in a portlet. Um, and then the static text portlet, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually show you those ones, okay? So those are the portlets that are available. Let's start with an events portlet. The events portlet uh, is a portlet that, and a portlet really is just a little piece of code that performs a specific function for us. And what that events portlet does is it goes out and looks at your site and it finds anything that is an event item um, and uh, returns those where the end date has not yet passed, right? The event end date has not yet passed, okay? So we can decide how many of those types of items we want to display. Um, you can set that to whatever you want. Maybe we only wanna show the, the three upcoming events, the next three upcoming events. Um, you have an opportunity to say workflows, to define a workflow state here. Um, the default is published and there's no reason to really change that, right? So when we talk about, we talked about items in part one, they have private and published stat, uh, states. Um, we would only want to display events that were actually published. We wouldn't want to display private ones uh, to the public. So we just leave that alone. Go ahead and click save, right? You can see my portlet shows up here. Uh, under portlets assigned here, because this is where we created it in the model county extension uh, parent folder. I'm going to go ahead and return here, and nothing's showing up. Why is nothing showing up? Because remember, we said only show published events. So let's go back in to our events folder. I'm going to contents and then events. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and publish the folder. And then I'm going to click on the event and go ahead and publish that as well. And there you can see as soon as I do that, over in the right hand uh, portlet area, that event shows up um, because the events portlet found a published event that is happening in the future. OK, that's how that works. Now, notice this is showing up in the events folder. That's because portlets flow downward. So even though we created it way up here in the home folder, right, uh, it's going to flow down to all the subfolders uh, below that. Okay? So keep that in mind. When you're creating portlets, it matters where you create them because that dictates where they appear. Questions about creating portlets or the events portlet? Please add them to the chat as I'm as I'm talking. A um, couple of things about this now as we're looking at the manage portlets page. Uh, one is if I want to hide this portlet, so I still want it to appear for me if I can manage it. So it's like turning it on and off. Um, I can just hide it, click hide, and then if we return here, you see it's gone. Okay, but if I go back. Here we go, and click show, and we return. Now it's back again. All right, so it stays in your manage portlets view, but it hides it from public, uh, public display. If I want to edit this, right, for whatever reason, maybe I want to go from three events to five events. If I want to edit a portlet, I just click on its name. All right, I can make whatever changes I want in that portlet. Go ahead and click save, and that will change it. Um, and then the last uh, option here, uh, at least with one portlet is in here, is to remove. So that X there, once I click that, boom, it's gone, right? Um, there's no, are you sure, uh, prompt or anything. Once you click that X button, it removes the portlet uh, from that area. So I want to add another portlet so I can show you how the, the news portlet works. And also we, so we can see what it looks like when we have a couple of portlets working in the same area. So I'm clicking Add Portlet again and News. Very similar to the Events Portlet. Actually, it's exactly the same. The News Portlet looks at your site, looks for any news items. That does not mean items that have news in them, right? So if you have a, a press release and you, you share it on your website by creating a page, um, the Egg CMS does not know that that's news. To, that, to the Egg CMS, it is a page, it is not news. But if you create it as a news item and then share it that way, then the Egg CMS will know that is news. So it looks for any news items um, 
again, that are published in this case, if we choose that as the workflow state, and we can define uh, the number of items to display there as we did with events. Go ahead and save that. Here we see we have our events portlet and our news portlet. Uh, same idea, what we talked about with the events portlet. If you want to edit it, I click the name, I can hide it, I can delete it. But now you can see I've got a couple of arrows here. That's to help me organize my portlets uh, to order them in that column. So if I want the news portlet to show up at the top, I just click the little move up arrow. Now news is at the top and events is below that. So we return again. And there's our news. Here it is. There's a, there's a news item that, that's actually published in here. Um, that's not the one that we created. Ours is private, so it's only showing that particular news item that is published. If we want to show the one that we created, we'd have to go in and publish it. So I'm going to click on that news item, change it from private to publish. There we go. And now you can see right here in the news portlet that test news item that we created today shows up. Um, and again, you can see they're in chronological order, right? So test news was created after, I should say reverse chronological order. Uh, test news is the latest item, so it is on top, the most recent item on top. Questions about the news portlet? So there's one more portlet that I want to show you, and that is the um, that is the static text portlet. So let me get up to uh, the place that we started, which is in that model county extension folder here. Here's our two portlets that we've created thus far. And now we're going to add the static text portlet. The static text portlet allows you to take all the things that you could do in the body text area of any item, right? Use text, images, links. Um, but locate that in a portlet. Um, so to create a static text portlet, go where you want that portlet to appear, um, and then go ahead and uh, choose Add Portlet and Static Text Portlet. That takes you to this page. We have an opportunity to put a portlet header in here. Uh, it's not required, but I would recommend doing it, right? Um, remember when we were editing portlets, well, I can just go back here and show you. You don't have to remember. Um, when we see the portlets assigned here, you can see that there's names here. That comes from the portlet header. Um, and if we don't put a portlet header in a static text portlet, it's just going to be a gray box with no name here. We're not necessarily going to know, easily know, what that portlet is. Okay. So when you create a static text portlet, if I can get it to create here, there we go. Um, you want to put a header in, all right? So uh, header in here. Then here's our body text area. I get text, right? Maybe maybe you want to have a series of quick links, things that are important, right? Okay, so we could make those into links. Uh, internal links inside of our site if we want to. Um, so we get to our model county extension site here. If I can find it, there it is. Um, right, so maybe I want to link to a particular event, like test event. All right, so there's an internal link to that. Um, sometimes people use these for logos uh, or other images to put in here. I can insert an image. Um, again, go into my folder and find the images folder. Maybe I want to put design your succession plan over there. Um, okay, so now I've got that in there. Um, so lots of different ways that you can use this. So you've got all the freedom that you would have when you're uh, editing a body text area, uh, except it just displays in the portlet column. Okay, a couple of other choices that you have. One is to omit the portlet border. Um, we don't use a border around our portlets. Um, so border is probably not the exact right word for us, but it does omit the portlet header and footer, right? So we named this test portlet uh, so we could easily find it and know what it was when we're managing portlets, but we might not want to display that. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like uh, with uh, either one. Uh, and then in this case, the portlet footer, we could use that if we want to uh, 
have a link to display more or learn more, right? So if you're using this for the, the design your succession plan logo, maybe you wanna get, uh, put the text learn more in here and then put the link to the DYSP site again with a full URL. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and save that portlet and return to take a look at what it looks like. So here's our portlet, here's our header, we said test portlet, right? Here's our text, our links that we put in, here's our image that we put in, and then here's the footer, right? I typed in learn more and that becomes a link to that URL that I put in. So if I jump in there, it's gonna take us to the DYSP site, okay? Um, Let's go ahead and go back and manage that portlet to take a look at what it looks like if we omit some of that stuff. So here's my uh, test portlet. I just click on the title there. Now, if we omit the portlet border, we're gonna get rid of the header and the footer. So if I save that and return, now here it is displayed, no header, right? Um, and even though we defined a footer, no footer. Um, available there as well. So it's just the text, the link, and the image that we put into the body text area, okay? A couple of things to keep in mind, especially if you're using static te text portlets. Um, on a desktop view, there is limited space for them, right? So we're talking ab about 200 to 220 pixels in the right-hand uh, column. So if I put in a, a giant 768 pixel or 1500 pixel wide image in there, it's probably not gonna work very well or look very good. Um, so keep that in mind that you've got some limited space in there. The other thing to keep in mind is that in a uh, in a mobile view, and this is a mock-up of a mobile view, this is the Ward County site, in our, in our mobile template, portlets go to the bottom. So I think we talked about mobile, our mobile template a little bit um, in the, uh, in the previous session, um, we prioritize what's in the content area. So when you're looking at the Ward County homepage here, this is what's in the content area. The navigation goes up here underneath the hamburger menu. Okay, and then all the portlets other than the navigation appear down here at the bottom. So on Ward County, the Ask an Expert link is a portlet, the news feed is a portlet, Facebook is a portlet, but it actually doesn't display in our mobile template. Um, the Facebook like box uh, is not working in our mobile template. And then we get down to the footer, okay? So keep that in mind when you're creating uh, creating portlets, right? That a lot of people um, are using, looking at your site using a mobile device, so you can create all the great content and pretty stuff that you see here. Uh, in the left hand and right hand portlets, that's gonna get pushed down to the bottom when you do that, okay? Last thing about portlets is that you do have some other spaces that you can create portlets. Um, if you see this link here, it says add editor, remove portlets below the content title. So they can go between the title and the description. That's one place to put them. Um, Above that, I should have started at above that, but if you go above the screen bar here, you see it says add, edit, or remove a portlet above the content. So you could put it at the very top above your content. Um, and then the last place is add, edit, or remove a portlet below the content. And that works a little bit differently. It's the same portlets, um, but it's arranged a little bit differently than our left and right hand column. Most often we see people using the left and right hand column, but know that those portlet areas are available to you. Okay, so uh, any last questions about anything that we've discussed today? I wanna remind you if you're watching the recordings uh, that you can contact me, Bob Birch, it's uh, robert.birch at ndsu.edu or Sonia Fox, sonia.fox at ndsu.edu. If you have any questions about Ag CMS, please let us know. And if you go to the NDSU AgCom page, thank you, Sonia, for adding that link to the chat. Uh, there are resources about Ag CMS, including our how-to site with lots of step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to do some things on Ag CMS. So please use that as a resource as well. 
all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the recording